my sociology students. Uh, my name is Jeff Mason. Uh, I used to teach with Mr. Shanahan for several years before I retired. Um, I'm actually here at the Gibby House in Arcade. It belongs to the Arcade Historical Society. Uh, those of you that went to uh, the Arcade Building for elementary school might remember me from the Gibby House uh, because now I, I volunteer some. Um, but uh, when you saw me at the Gibby House, I didn't have to wear a mask. Uh, I'm here with Skip Tillinghast, and I think Mr. Shanahan has shown you the videos that Skip and I worked on uh, for Pioneer's 35th and 50th anniversaries. So I want to uh, show you a few things and tell you a few things that normally I would have done uh, in person in your class. Uh, just a little background. Uh, I graduated from Arcade Central School in 1966, so I wasn't around uh, when uh, the Pioneer High School uh, opened as a junior-senior high school. Uh, I came back to teach in 1973 when my 10th grade teacher from Arcade retired, and I took her place. Uh, by the time I came in 1973, pardon the mask, but um, uh, this was still a junior-senior high school for two more years, so it was grades 7 through 12, and we were packed. Uh, it was a very crowded building until the middle school opened in 1975. Uh, but by the time I came in 1973, uh, four classes had already graduated from this building, so there wasn't really any more of that arcade delavan Machias rivalry that there, there would have been uh, earlier. Uh, but I've got uh, a few different artifacts to show you um, with some changes in the times. And uh, one deals with the attitude towards smoking. Uh, teachers back then uh, could smoke in the faculty lounge. Uh, and this went on for a number of years. I've got um, a memo uh, from 1983 from Mr. O'Connell, who was the first uh, principal at the middle school. And he says, uh, the Board of Education on December 11th, 1982, approved a policy which prohibits smoking by staff members in classrooms and offices. I have designated the faculty dining room as the only area approved for adult smoking in the middle school, effective immediately. And uh, here at the high school, uh, the faculty lounge uh, was a, a smoking room. Uh, we had a separate faculty dining room, which doesn't exist anymore. And um, it would get pretty smoky sometimes in the uh, uh, faculty room. Uh, unfortunately, it would also get pretty smoky in the bathrooms because for the first several years, uh, students didn't have to report to the cafeteria during their lunch period and all the lavatories were open. And so um, there was a fair amount of smoking going on in the, in the lavatories. Uh, you had some teachers, uh, including me, that were assigned to hall duty, uh, sometimes referred to as potty patrol. Uh, but uh, with all the labs open, we couldn't possibly monitor uh, every lab all the time. And so uh, there was a fair amount of smoking that went on. Uh, attitudes were a little different and more casual toward uh, drinking. Um, back uh, when I started, uh, kids could still drink at the age of 18, legally. Um, and um, I've got a couple of things to show you here uh, because uh, a big fundraiser uh, for most classes was the junior class magazine sale uh, to raise money for the senior trip. And um, you'd get different levels of prizes depending on how many magazine subscriptions you sold. And um, we had uh, one salesman that uh, uh, came in and talked to the junior class every year uh, to get their uh, program started. And he was quite a salesman. And um, so depending on how many you sold, um, you know, you might get a prize like this. Uh, this is a 1981 mug. 
And uh, this one is a 1990 mug. And um, uh, this guy would uh, stand up in front of the junior class and say, okay, if you sell X number of magazine subscriptions, you would get this nice milk mug. And of course, everybody knew what he meant. Um, that wouldn't go over too big with the administration now. Uh, we take underage drinking a lot more seriously. Uh, then uh, some other things. Uh, we used to have an activity period. Uh, it was usually fourth period and you'd report back to your homeroom and that's when uh, there would be all sorts of different clubs and other activities. And uh, for several years, the phys ed teachers didn't have a homeroom so they could run intramurals, uh, usually with homerooms competing against each other. Uh, this is the uh, championship plaque uh, from the uh, intramural volleyball tournament, which my homeroom won as sophomores in 1979. Uh, they also had uh, uh, did pretty well in the uh, ping pong tournament and the uh, tennis tournament. Uh, there were also uh, sometimes uh, another fundraiser for the seniors was uh, slave auctions, uh, which uh, got pretty rowdy sometimes. But back then, uh, your requirements to graduate were a lot lower than they are now. And eventually it became impossible to continue to have an activity period uh, when uh, you needed more class time in order to, uh, to fulfill all the graduation requirements. Uh, it was a lot easier to graduate from high school back then than it is now. And uh, I can safely say uh, students and teachers uh, work a lot harder now than they did uh, 40 or 50 years ago. Uh, this is a master schedule for the faculty from uh, my first year. And back then, uh, we only had to teach five periods. Uh, teachers now generally teach six or seven classes a day uh, because we would also have a duty period, you know, like cafeteria duty or hall duty. Uh, and you would have your planning period and you'd also have activity period. Uh, this, you can maybe see, is uh, printed in purple. Uh, which is um, printed on a, a ditto machine. And uh, your parents or grandparents might uh, tell you that, you know, if a teacher came back uh, to the classroom with a bunch of papers that had just gone through the ditto machine, everybody picked them up and smelled them because they had a unique smell. Uh, then, um, uh, let me show you a couple of uh, handbooks here. This is a 1972-73 faculty handbook uh, with some interesting information, uh, including uh, school lunch prices. Uh, for a complete lunch for students, it was 40 cents. This was 1972-73. and uh, If you just wanted the main dish, it was 30 cents. Uh, desserts were 10 cents, ice cream was 10 cents. Uh, sandwiches were uh, 25. Uh, then a few other things in here. Let me just find the pages. Um, okay, this list of different electives because back in the early 70s, uh, it was real popular to have 10 week electives for English and social studies. Um, and as a social studies teacher, um, uh, you know, I would teach uh, mostly uh, 10 and 20 week classes. And it was possible, believe it or not, if you played the system, uh, you could graduate from high school without taking American history. If you put the right combination of 10 week electives together in 11th grade. Uh, that didn't last too long, fortunately. Uh, then uh, here I've got um, oh, the telephone system. Of course, we didn't have cell phones. 
uh, there was actually a telephone switchboard with a switchboard operator in the high school office. And they, the high school office didn't look anything like it does now. And so there's all these instructions on how you would place a call uh, because you'd pick up the phone in your classroom, but you couldn't just dial outside. You'd have to go through the switchboard. And if it was a long distance call, you had to tell the switchboard operator who it was you were calling. And of course it had to be on school business. And then um, uh, instead of school vans, uh, we had um, um, four uh, Oldsmobile station wagons. Uh, that's kind of a thing of the past in a couple of different ways. You don't see a lot of station wagons getting made anymore. And uh, you definitely don't see Oldsmobiles made anymore. And those were parked in an underground garage under the cafeterias because there was no bus garage back then. And uh, if you had a, a vehicle signed out as a teacher, uh, if, you know, if there wasn't room to uh, park down in the underground garage, uh, then you were instructed to, um, to leave it out in the parking lot with the key under the mat, um, high security. Uh, then, uh, I don't have a date on this, I think this is the later 70s, uh, but it's uh, another uh, handbook for students. Um, talks about fire and air raid drills because there were still air raid drills into the 1970s. So when we're still in the Cold War and concerned about uh, an atomic bomb, um, not that going out in the hallway or hiding under your desk was going to stop you from nuclear radiation. And um, there's a little paragraph here about uh, dress. And uh, let me just put on my glasses here. Uh, we take pride in the appearance of our students. You should always be clean and be dressed in such a manner that shows good taste. Shorts and Bermuda shorts are not to be worn to any class other than gym class. So that's in the late 70s. Uh, then this is a calendar from 1979-1980. And uh, school lunch prices had gone up quite a bit. Uh, so for middle and high school, uh, you're up to 60 cents a day for lunch. So we had that. Uh, then, um, in terms of uh, some other things, you know, we've got, you know, the new science wing and music wing. Uh, there was no OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration back then. So uh, in the music rooms, uh, there used to be built-in risers. And uh, if you were, let's say, in the percussion section and band, you were on the top riser, uh, not too many feet away from the ceiling. And, uh, uh, now that would be a, a violation of OSHA sound regulations. Um, you didn't have uh, uh, handicapped students in the building back then. You wouldn't have seen kids in wheelchairs back then. They were somewhere, but not in school. And uh, uh, the science labs were state of the art back in 1969 but they did not comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act from 1990. And uh, the science wing that we have now uh, is totally different from the old science rooms. Uh, then uh, special education. You know, if you had uh, some sort of learning disability, uh, you just kind of muddled along and, and struggled with your disability and, you know, you maybe drop out at 16 or try to make it through high school. Um, when I started, uh, there was one special ed teacher in the building, Mrs. Nelson. Uh, so uh, things have changed a lot for special ed and for handicapped students. Um, not too many students had cars. Uh, our student parking lot out in front of the building is much larger than it was uh, when this building opened because uh, many more students have cars, even though the student population in the building is lower. Um, security. Of course, you can still go out any door in the building, but 
It used to be until 1999 with the Columbine incident in Colorado, uh, you could come in any door in the building. So, um, you know, it was fairly easy. I suppose it's still easy now if you wanted to sneak out of the building, but you'd have a heck of a time sneaking back in the building now. But back then, you could, you could come in any door of the building. Uh, there was no greeter's desk or anything like that. Um, class spirit and school spirit. Uh, uh, classes, the junior class was always responsible for the prom. Uh, proms for many years were held in the gym. And so for the week leading up to the prom, phys ed classes were held outside, even if it was raining, because the juniors would take over the gym, uh, string a wire uh, from uh, the different sides of the bleachers, and then hang crepe paper to create a false ceiling. And then on Friday after lunch, it'd start bringing all the chairs and tables down from the cafeteria and putting in other decorations. And if it was really humid, then the crepe paper would sag and you'd have to go around and, and tighten it all up again. Um, the Christmas ball uh, was also held in the school for many years. Um, and it was called the Christmas ball, not the winter ball. And uh, uh, after the middle school opened, uh, that was held in the middle school cafetorium for a number of years. Uh, then uh, you've got all sorts of pioneer wearing apparel now. Uh, what I've got here, uh, I advised a, a few classes with Mrs. Hong, and uh, one of the classes we advised was the class of 1981, and this was the first class to have a class t-shirt. Uh, this is uh, Ziggy, the cartoon character, and uh, he's saying it's hard to be humble and be a senior, uh, but then on the back are the names of all the seniors. Unfortunately, they're, they're not all with us anymore. Um, another thing is agriculture. I mean, we've always had a great FFA program, but uh, that was always kind of kept off to the side. Uh, one big change uh, is uh, there was no uh, drive your tractor to school day. And there wasn't the pride in the agriculture program that we have now. I mean, now we're, you know, we, we uh, promote the idea that we're an agricultural community and that we have all these different uh, programs, including the Ag Barn. Um, and I guess I would just conclude by saying that um, even though this is kind of ancient history for a lot of you, um, maybe not for your parents or grandparents, but uh, someday uh, you're going to be talking to your own kids about what school was like during the pandemic and the different things that you had to do, like wearing a mask and trying to keep it up over your nose. And uh, uh, your kids may have a hard time believing uh, what school was like in 2020. So uh, two words of advice, Panther on. <laughs>